Welcome to Cindy and Joe Show. I'm Joe. I'm Cindy. And if you're a Tigers fan, you are the owner of a lonely heart. <laughs> lonely because, well, the Tigers have really left us wanting. That's for damn sure. Listen, I, I, I gotta I gotta get something off my, my chest, okay? Just one thing, Joe? <laughs> Well, it's a couple things, so <laughs> so bear with me while I go through my my little, you know, synopsis of this this Tigers team right now. You go, boy, you go. Tell All right. Us. First thing is, this Tigers team couldn't score in a whorehouse <laughs> with Viagra. Okay, that's the first. That's the first thing. This offense is wow. offensive to me, and I gotta watch this again, and I have to see this again. And not only that, but we were told that this was going to be a better year, right? We both predicted a lot of wins. We did. We both predicted a lot of wins. I look back on that prediction and go, man, that's bad. That's, that's pretty bad. Because right now, through the games that all the games they played, they've got 63 runs. I think it's 63 runs. Well, that explains their record. Listen, it's it's just it's just one thing after another. And if they didn't have if their bullpen wasn't ha, had the best ERA in the Major League Baseball, it could be even worse. If their starting pitching wasn't top ten in, in the ERA, it could be a lot worse. This team can't field to save their life. The the defense is is really just it's maddening to me. And the offense, like we've said, is really, really bad. And it's offensive to watch. Well, you know, this is the sad part about this is, you know, we've talked about the issues with concerns about the bullpen in the past, concerns about the starting pitching rotation, you know, pitching, 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 you know, so important to the game. And here we are, the Tigers seem to have finally dialed that in after all of these years, right? They finally got it dialed in on their pitching. They've got a very good start, as you pointed out. And now everything else is falling apart. And it's just inexcusable to me and unexplainable why we have to tolerate this stuff when they finally get one thing right and everything else is going to help. Um, you know, the bats got to come alive. And until they do, they're going to have to get real creative with how to get on base and how to advance the runners once they're on base. And as far as their fielding goes, well, you know, my God, I mean, they got to – start training these guys better because I mean, I think they're going to have to start hitting beach balls out there into the outfield to see if somebody can catch them. It wouldn't even help. Wouldn't even help. See, they got 67 runs scored on the year. You know who that's tied with? The three and 20 Cincinnati Reds, the three and 20 Cincinnati Reds. That's how bad the offense has been. And I want to hear about how it's cold out or, or a couple guys are, are struggling. Okay, cool. But that doesn't, that doesn't equate to why they are, this bad at trying to score runs just doesn't make sense. But this is a bigger, there's a bigger issue in this too. Now, Cindy might call me unfair because she probably will. But listen, this all goes to the foot of that dog bleep (laughs) bad general manager known as Al Vila. Now, recently we posted the Between the Whistles, the general uh, general manager power rankings, okay? Stevie Y was number one. Brad Holmes was number two. Troy Weaver of the Pistons was number three. And Al Vila was number four. I'm surprised you even put Al Vila on the list, period. Well, to be, to be, he to, made the list as qualifying. To be honest, I, I should have just put, like, Jim Harbaugh and Mel Tucker ahead of him, even though they aren't general managers, because... At least they can put together an effing roster, okay? Like, you expected the rubbings to be bad. Not, well, they, they were actually pretty, they were decent this year. They, they, they weren't that great. But anyways, you get the point. The Pistons, you expected them not to be good. They're in year three of their re, their rebuild. Like, they're, they're, he, Troy Weaver's on year three. Brad Holmes is in year two. Stevie Y is in year three, and he had a mess to clean up. He basically had to, he basically had to mop the floors and clean up all the puke in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Al Avila was in this organization. He was yeah. in the organization. So he comes in. He's in he's in year seven. He's in year seven. We gave we we gave 
you know, we give we give Stevie Y a hard time because the rubbings weren't just that good this year. We gave Brett we give Brett Holmes a bad time because you know, he's in year he was in year one last year and they won three games and people are like, oh, now now they're starting to come around because they're actually starting to use their effing heads. You know, that's that's a freaking crime nowadays using your brain. And then Troy Weaver, they're like, oh, the team doesn't improve. Cause you don't want to improve because you gotta get that you gotta get that lottery pick and get get a stud to pair with Kate. Now, Al Vila has been there seven years. Seven years. And you know, you got Spencer Torkelson up, Casey Myers up, you know, Riley Green up. Those are first round picks. He should hit on first round picks. Now I'll give him credit for Tarek Scoble. I'll give him credit for the one year of Akil Badu, because right now Badu is 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 doo doo. <laughs> I'll give him that credit, but I will not give him credit for this roster and the way that it's 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 constructed. Listen, we always heart we always get pissed off about the Red Wings, right? The Red Wings they they, right. they should be better than they are. Eisenman's in year three. I mean, there's some fans that are like get growing impatient with Eisenman. Okay, the beloved Steve Eisenman. Brad Holmes has been there two years. Basically, he's had enough time to put his his. His his doc his his, his uh, bachelor uh, degree on on the wall, and he's he's he got flack. Troy Weaver is getting flack, and now Vila gets a free pass in this town, like hell, like hell, like hell, and it makes it even worse because they are losing to the rat bleep Pittsburgh Pirates. Would it make you feel any better, Joe, if they were losing to uh, the Houston Astros because they're going to be playing them soon? If they were losing <laughs> the New York Yankees, I'd be like, okay. Makes sense. Yankees are hot. Okay, cool. They were losing their race. I'd be like, cool. They're losing to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh. Okay. okay, I'll give you this. Here's the thing. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. So the fact that Alavila seems to be taking the same road every single year in his rebuild, a rebuild would indicate progression okay you need to see progressive improvement that is not the case here why would you continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results that's the definition of insanity so i think what we have joe is we've got a gm who's simply insane uh that's currently in charge you know of of the uh tigers and we have i think you know steve recognized it's time to make a change in his organization uh and he released jeff flashler it didn't renew his contract I think it's time that we recognize a change needs to be made in the front office of the Detroit Tigers if we're going to see anything happen. And it's a shame because he's got a lot of good talent there. He's got, okay, a kill but do so he's having a rough year. He's got a little bit of a slump. But, hey, the guy had a hell of a rookie year, even under Alavilla. So, But I think that these guys deserve, and A.J. Hinch deserves a better GM than Al Avila. And I think that it's up the organization's ownership to make that change, to give their club a chance, and to give these guys a chance and stuck with them. Listen, the Pirates' payroll is $41 million. You're losing to a rat bleep franchise. You're losing to a rat bleep franchise. You won game one, cool. You should sweep these, these, these guys. They're not good. They're not good. Not, not, they're not, they're, none of it's good. But, you know, this is, this is the thing. And I go back to this. When Stevie Y trades with someone, he usually gets a better end of the deal. Agree? Yes. When when Brad Holmes made the deal on draft night to get the, the trade with the Vikings, he got the better end of the deal. When Troy Weaver traded corpses to other teams, he got draft picks. Okay? <laughs> and they turned into Sadiq Bey, Isaiah Stewart, you know, guys like that. No, I have no problem with that. El Vila has traded – these players away, and he has nothing to prove for it. J.D. Martinez, Justin Verlander, like those are two big ones that you could you, you should have got you should have got someone's best prospects. You know, like I was hearing this today, right? Mm-hmm. The Chicago White Sox when they traded Jose Quintana, who the Tigers play today, who was pitching for the Pirates, they traded him to the Chicago Cubs, right? They didn't just get. Uh, two one prospect. They got two prospects that are big time ball players for their team right now. Dylan Cease and Eloy Jimenez, who is one of the finest outfielders in the game right now. 
and they were trading Jose Quintana. We traded Justin Verlander, J.D. Martinez, and got back a spit whistle. <laughs> well, I'll, look, there, there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye, and I think it's obvious that uh, there's a failure in this organization to develop talent uh, and develop it properly. You finally got your, your pitching on par, but now where the hell are your bats? Your bats are gone. Who's, who's your batting coach? Who the hell is in charge of that? Um, you know, we've got to find out. I mean, I get it. A guy is going to go into a slump from time to time, okay? That happens. But you don't have half your team in a slump. That doesn't happen. Statistically, it's not, it's not possible unless you've got a failure somewhere in your training program. And that's exactly what I think we're seeing evidence of. So nobody has to tell me that there's a failure in the training program because it's obvious in the performance, okay? So... Um, they need to address those issues. Al Avila is the guy who's responsible to do that, and he's not doing that. So until they get this figured out, the only way I think the, their Tigers are going to have some chance, they, they got to bring the bats back. Okay, that's it. End of story. They've got to start hitting. Now, in addition to starting to hit, what can they do in the meantime? And that's what I said I, I alluded to earlier, right? One of the things they can do is they're going to have to get creative With getting these guys on base, they're going to have to force some walks. They're going to have to, once they get on base, you know, maybe just concentrate on, on, on lobbing a couple into the, you know, barely into the outfield just to get some guys on base and then maybe work on some, you know, you know, base running, um, concentrate on other areas of the game until they can get up to par with getting these sluggers hitting again. Because when your team is batting under 300, you're not going anywhere but down. And what are the the Tigers are what, like 272 or something like that? Um, You know, you've got half your team not performing. And so until you correct that, you're going to have to try to stay in the hunt somehow waiting for that to happen. And the only way you do that is by getting creative. That's going to be up to A.J. Hinch because, unfortunately, he is stuck with Alavila and um, hopefully can put some pressure somewhere to make a change. But until that time, they're going to have to get creative with their uh, crew that they've got. Listen, it's, it's, it's one thing for people to make excuses for this team. Because I see a lot of people making excuses for this team. Oh, it's the first month. Oh, it's this. You're at the same record you were last year. Yeah, last, unacceptable. Last year, when you after, after May, you started to take off. But it was a little bit too late because you can't catch up. to the. You had to play near perfect to get back to what you, you know, get to, to get a chance at the playoffs, right? Yep. You have to play near perfect to get to that spot. It's the same thing this year. You're gonna have to, you you're gonna have to start winning series, and you play some dog bleep franchises in the next couple of weeks. The Athletics, who they can't even get they can't even get the cat to go to the, the, the game. <laughs> your, your cat, your cat, they can't get him to go to the game. The the Orioles. I mean, the coolest thing about the Orioles is their cartoon, the mascot, their cartoon character on their uh, yeah, I agree. Hat. I agree. That's the but, coolest but, thing. But, about no, but no, but no, no one respects the Orioles. I mean, they got a, they got a, they got a uh, salary that's probably like ten million dollars, basically. The, you know, <laughs> like cheap. They're like on the Walmart salary. <laughs> like you're, you're bringing all these teams in that are just junky teams. So you should be winning. Like you should be winning. Pirates are a junky team. No matter what their record is, they're about the same record. But I mean, come on, like it's. It, it, the Tigers were supposed to be a near playoff team. That's what we were told. That's what we were told. Like they, LV- and, and quite frankly, that's why Miguel Cabrera stuck around because he believed it too. He was sold a bill of goods, you know. That he and he LV- says he wants to stay. He says he wants to stay with this organization. Hey, how about let's look at this? Let's take Miguel Cabrera and make him the GM. I mean, you, you, might, you might as well because right. I, I mean, he at least has a pulse. I don't think El Vila <laughs> has a pulse right now. Like, it, like people people want to say, oh, you know, it, it, it's a lot harder to rebuild in baseball. You know, old people, you know, like, you know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Because any other GM, we'd be raking them through the coals if they're in year seven and they were doing nothing. Like, I got to hear from people going, oh, man, you got to give them more time. You got to give more time. The, the Tigers are running out of time. Here's the thing. And it's just like you said, and I agree with you, Joe, which is why I said they've got to do something to win some games to keep them at least in the hunt um, 
at this point before they get it better. Because otherwise, you're going to be trying to play catch up and trying to get in the playoffs when it's impossible. I remember El Vila back in 1988. <laughs> they have a good ball club here in Detroit. <laughs> All the all the old, all all the older people are like he's a fine young man. He's not young. He's like great tune though. 60. Good choice. I'm digging it. Like, hey, take out Avila out and like let's get someone who has like a pulse. You know, like take his ass out and just throw him to the curb. He's, he's like uh, he's like uh, the sink that doesn't work anymore. Okay, like you get rid of the sink because it's it's not good. Like you just it doesn't work no more. Like you you can't be you can't wash your hands in that. It's forever unclean. Right, I got you. Wow, that's a real, that's a very interesting um, comparison. I, I would have never put that Alavilla, together. A, a non-working sink is Alavilla. I, Alavilla I like needs to be, boob, Alavilla's boob ass needs to get gone. I'm sick <laughs> well, of it. Was, it was Matt Patricia that you called a boob. Sorry, yeah, but this Matt, would qualify too. I this think. would qualify too because, you know, at least at least with Matt Patricia, he made it known real early. Alavilla, I knew, I've been saying this for years, but no, everyone's like, you got to give him a chance. How much chance should you see? I mean, for God's sakes, it, you see the fruits of their labor early on. If they're a good GM, you see the fruits of their labor. Like, if, especially if they're trading people. Like, I mean, Jesus, Pete, Stevie Y trades Mantha and gets back a first round pick, a second round pick, and Jacob Verona. Sweet. Sweet trade. They, they, Troy Weaver trades a bunch of corpses for draft picks, and he ends up he ends up with Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart. Even cooler. Brad Holmes fleeces the Vikings GM and gets Jameson Williams in the draft. Okay, bold, bold. I respect that. Would you get back for J, JD and JV? Eh, nothing. Nothing. No doubt. Poor moves. Poor moves by this GM. But what it shows me in the fact that. He's got. He's really letting these players down in terms you're of in your, the organization. You are in year seven. Year yeah. seven. No, he's letting he's letting them down. He's letting us down. And the organization, the the, the ownership needs to recognize that, and they need to do something you know, about it. You know the thing that pisses. And me. they need to do something about it, Joe. Before it's too late. You know. The, you know. You know. What pisses me off. Ken Holland got raked through the coals in, in the city, raked through the coals, and he won Stanley Cups. He won Stanley Cups. He won one in the salary cap era. He won three in the non-salary cap era. Guy won. Yeah. The one guy who hasn't won nothing, like absolutely nothing. No one's saying anything about him. And we gotta hear. We gotta hear people saying, "Oh, I expected more from the Red Wings this year." Or, ah, you know, it's, it's, imagine if the Lions have a you know, they they go six and whatever. They win six games next year. People are gonna be like, "Oh, I, thought, I expected more." Then what is this bull crap? This baseball team? It's not even fun. I went to opening day. That was that was the funnest they had this season. At least Javi Baez is electric. That's it. But geez, like I mean, this whole this whole team is just underachieving morons right now. So since you're so fixated on Alavila, and I get it, I do. Okay, I understand. However, let me ask you this then. Why do you think he's getting a pass? I don't even know. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, we don't even we don't even get passes to our mom and dad for that like that long. <laughs> like, if dad's out screwing another woman, you're not going, oh, wow. it's okay, it's okay, dad. It's been seven years. You're you're out tramping along with these 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 invalids. I mean, Alavila, he's getting seven years to absolutely do absolutely nothing. Like he's like he's not even a father figure. He's just he's just he's just there collecting a paycheck. Well, I'll tell you, he that that needs that needs to stop because we can't afford to wait and see another season. We really can't. And I think that what Alavila has done and he has highlighted the need for this ownership to make changes, and I think not only him, to be quite honest with you, but who the hell's the batting coach, right? Let's take a look at it. What it the, doesn't matter the about the batting coach is. because this is all falls on Ella Vila. Every ounce of it falls on Ella Vila. This guy is literally probably just laughing because he's getting paid to do absolutely effing nothing. Like I said, 
Ken Holland got raked over the coals. He won championships. He did stuff for the the, 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 fr- the franchise. LV has done nothing. He's getting a free effing pass. It's like it's like it's like when Matt Millen got a free pass from the Fords. Like, give me a break. Chris Illich needs to get rid of this guy because this is this is a joke. You're talking about one of the most premier franchises in sports, the Detroit Tigers, who has one of the oldest logos in sports. They have one of the rec- most recognizable brands in sports with the old English D. And you're gonna you're gonna poop along this all this poop emoji <laughs> baseball team. Wow, we're all about the excrement today. Okay, so here's the thing. They've got to make that. They've got to make a change somewhere. They've got to make it soon. And in the meantime, AJ Hinch is going to have to really pull out every listen, trick out of the book. Listen, to try to keep I know, this team. I know. I know. I'm a little bit rambunctious right now. Okay, just a little bit. I know I'm a little bit rambunctious, but I got one last thing. Oh boy! And then we'll end it. Take Alavila, strap him to one of te- Elon Musk's uh, a rocket, okay. and send him to the moon. Because I don't need him no more. He's been an absolute just. Joke of a general manager. Like I said, you can get, uh, you can. I could see more stuff being done if you actually do it. There's nothing being done. J, you traded JD and JV away, and you got nothing for him. There's no prospects like Eloy Jimenez or, or, or Dylan Cease, like the White Sox got. We get Dow Lugo. Dow Lugo. That guy's probably like mowing lawns right now or, or, or working at Walmart. I don't know. <laughs> Like, I don't even know who the hell – he was on the Tigers for, like, five seconds. And don't get me started about Jay Marcondolero because that was that was a you, – you, that, that's one you got, you kind of lucked into. That's it. But besides that, the roster has not changed. If you go through the rosters, it is uh, like, year by year, mm-hmm. it hasn't changed that much. We just got rid of more crappy players for more crappy players. And then we added a little uh, – here's a little bias. Oop, 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 oop. Here's a little here's, here's a little awesome meadows, you know, putting the cherry on top of a shit uh, ice cream sandwich. That's exactly what it is. Wow, I don't think there's anything more I can say about that that I've already said. I understand the frustration, but we've got to just try to do whatever we can to stay competitive long enough for hopefully AJ Hinge and we, organization to fix this. If you don't get your Act together, Chris. You're going to lose A.J. Hinch, and you're going to be stuck with this invalid I.L. Vila. I mean, look across the street to Stevie Wise. See what that guy's doing. And go get me a Theo Epstein like Stevie Wise uh, level. Go get me that guy. I don't want L. Vila no more. He's an absolute joke. Well, that says it all. <laughs> all right, I'm done. So uh- next segment, we'll be talking to Red Wings, at, where they actually have a general manager who actually – can do stuff, who doesn't look like a dumbass in his front office, who doesn't make dumbass decisions like someone we know. And we'll talk about the coaching search and two players that we would like to add to the Rubbings roster next year. That's next in between the whistles.